Hello people, I'm the Real Comic Book Gamer. Today I'm going to talk about Marvel Legacy issue number one. Now I'm going to be talking spoilers with this, so if you haven't read it and you don't want anything spoil uh, spoiled for you, uh, don't watch this video or read it and then watch this video because I'm going to be spoiling stuff, so there's your warning. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be carrying, comparing this a lot to DC Rebirth issue number one because that's basically what this is for Marvel. This is their Rebirth number one. And so yeah, let's get into it. The art is pretty good for the most part in this book. It's done by a lot of different artists. you got some great guys on there. Like like Steve McNiven and Ed McGinnis, so there's some really good art in there, uh, there's some okay, but overall I'd say the art's pretty good, there's a ton of different artists in the back, they put all the artists in there, there's just a crap ton. Um, the, it's written by Jason Aaron, who I'm a big fan of personally, I think he did some fantastic stuff with Wolverine, he's done some pretty good stuff with Star Wars, so I'm a fan of Jason Aaron, but... For me, overall, this book, this book was a pretty mixed bag. There was some really cool stuff, and there was just some whatever stuff. I think it really uh, lacked coherence. There was a lot of just switching to a million different places, and some stuff was literally just one panel, and that was it, and that was all you saw. I think it would have benefited from having something like DC Rebirth, where you had Wally West going through the DC universe, and he was sort of your tour guide. He was the guy that you went along with, and you were experiencing everything with Wally West, to where with this, there is someone that narrates it all, but you're not really experiencing it with anyone you're not there's not someone to like be sort of the anchor that like shows like everything that's going on instead it's just switching from the avengers back in like 1 million bc or whatever i think that's what they are i think they're avengers 1 million bc is what they're called i don't remember and then you're going to ghost rider and star brand fighting and then you're going to she thor and cap falcon and iron heart they're all fighting some frost giants and then here's ben Grimm and human torch and here's captain america in a diner and it's like okay can we get some some coherence instead of just constantly going to all these different places? And that's basically all it was. It was just like, look at this. Isn't this kind of cool? Did you, did you kind of miss this? And that was kind of that was sort of how a lot of it went. There was some cool stuff. I'm going to talk about the good stuff because there there was some good stuff. The Avengers 1 million BC, again, I don't remember if that's what it's called. I think that's what it's called when they announced the book for it. It lo it looks pretty cool. I liked it. I thought it was an interesting concept. I like seeing Odin as, as the Thor of back then. We've got like an Iron Fist and a Black Panther and a Sorcerer Supreme and stuff. And it's pretty cool. I liked it. I thought the concept was cool seeing them all fight. Well, we didn't really get to see them, but we saw the end of their fight with a Celestial. And I thought it was pretty cool. I liked that stuff. It was interesting. And then the other part of the book that I really liked was big time spoilers, by the way. I know I already gave a spoiler alert earlier, but I'm going to give it again because it's a huge spoiler. Wolverine's back. And I loved seeing how he was introduced back. I loved it. How this frost giant had stolen this thing from S.H.I.E.L.D., which we learned later was an Infinity Gem. But he's stealing it. He's running through. He's running and he's calling Loki to open the portal back so he can go and go back to Loki because he stole this for Loki. And uh, when he does that, he gets hit by a semi truck. And then the uh, frost giant's like all mad and he's like, Come out so I can skin you alive. And he comes out and it's Wolverine. It's like, Oh man, that was awesome. And I love seeing Wolverine back. That was the part of the book that made me smile. Because the other stuff, I was like, okay, the Avengers 1 million BC, that's pretty cool. And then this made me literally actually smile while reading the book. I was like, man, that was great. But that's the that's the highest high of the book. The rest of it is just okay. It's like, oh, there's Ben Graham and Human Torch. Okay. And then they try to give you like a big thing at the end where it's like, oh, look at Franklin and Valeria Richards. Isn't that cool? And it's like, oh, well, I don't really care, and most people predicted that anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. I feel like some people will probably be like, oh wow, Franklin Valeria Richards, but for me, it was just, eh, I didn't really care, and like I said, it really did lack coherence. It was just all over the place. Like I said, you're you're on you're with Captain America for like a page or two, then you're with like Ben Grimm and uh, and Human Torch for like a page, and then like I said at the end, you go to like Franklin and Valeria Richards for like a page. And then the, the you have like three main well I'd say maybe a couple main stories uh, you got the whole Loki and his frost giants then you got Thor well, she Thor and Cap Falcon and uh, Iron Heart who fight them and then they got their own thing by the way this is some of the cringiest writing I've ever read from Jason Aaron like I said I'm a Jason Aaron fan but man this stuff was all oh, but the way he writes uh, Riri Williams now I understand why people hate Riri Williams. God, this is my first time reading Riri Williams, and it just the dialogue for her was terrible. You could tell it was like a 40-something-year-old man writing for a teenage girl. This is how teenage girls talk, right? The way she just... Oh, I wanted... I wish some... I just wanted a frost giant to just kill her, just murder her on the spot. So annoying. When they were all fighting, I was like, okay, I know Falcon, but like, she Thor... Okay, I don't really know she Thor, I don't really know Riri Williams, but at least I know Falcon. And then they were just... Uh, it was... 
that just the, her dialogue was terrible. And then some of uh, Robbie Reyes' dialogue as Ghost Rider wasn't too great, where he's like, prepare to be punched in the face a million times. He says something along those lines in the book, and I was like, that Ghost Rider's supposed to be kind of scary, right? Because that just sounded, like, cringeworthy. And again, this is stuff that I'm not used to with Jason Aaron, because Jason Aaron generally writes really good, but this stuff was really, like, his dialogue was pretty cringeworthy in this book. Again, there was some good stuff, but for the most part, it was just a mess. It was all over the place, and it was just showing a bunch of different stuff, and they miss, they mentioned Legacy about a thousand times. If you want a fun drinking game, well, not fun drinking game, you, you might be dead by the end of it, take a shot every time they say Legacy in this book. You will probably die by the end of it. There's just, my god, they say Legacy so many times. It's been a while since I've said since I've read DC Rebirth, so I don't remember if they said Rebirth this many times in the book. I don't think they did, but maybe they did. Because in this book, dear God, they say Legacy so many times. But yeah, overall my thoughts are, it's okay, it's not absolutely terrible, and the stuff that's bad about it isn't because of SJW stuff, I'll say that. It, this isn't like pushing SJW agenda or anything for the most part in the book. It's just the fact that it's not very good. Like, the storytelling's not that great, and there's just... I hated Riri Williams for every page she was in when she was talking. It was god awful. It was just terrible. But yeah, it's bad. Well, I mean, it's not very good, but it's not because of the SJW stuff, really. It's just because it doesn't seem like they know what they were doing. They're like, Rebirth was successful for Marvel. Let's, I mean, for DC, let's do that for Marvel with Legacy. Let's, let's do that. Okay, and again, there was two cool parts, and that was it. That was the Avengers 1 million BC stuff and the Wolverine coming, and Wolverine coming back. Besides that, it was just whatever. The rest of the stuff was a mess and I didn't really care about at all. Now let's talk about the big elephant in the room, which is the price of this book. It is $6 for this book. And not just because I got the lenticular cover. No, the normal cover is $6 too, because I looked at my comic shop, they had a fat stack of lenticular covers and one regular cover left. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get the regular cover because it's most likely cheaper. No, it was $6 as well. I was like, what the? I know it's a big event and it's more than usual pages. It's 58 pages for $6. You know what, DC Rebirth, how many pages that was and how much that cost? That cost $3 when it launched and for 81 pages. So 81 pages of a superior book for less cost versus a book that is far inferior, that has less pages. It's double the price! Marvel, what are you doing? This is highway robbery for us as comic book fans. You know comic fans aren't the richest people in the world. $6 for a single issue of a 58-page book that's not even that good? This is... God, I don't know how Marvel's getting away with this. This is terrible. It's just, this is awful for comic fans. DC Rebirth did it right. Three dollars, eighty-one pages, and this just, God. And like I said, there was a fat stack of the lenticular covers at my comic stop, at my comic shop. And man, that just that that shows you how this is. There's not very many people were behind this. Who knows? Maybe later they'll be buying them. But yeah, just. I don't know how well this is going to sell for Marvel. It's probably going to sell pretty good, but overall not so great in the grand scheme of things because it's like, hey, it sells pretty good, but we also shipped out so many that it ends up not selling so great. That's sort of how Secret Empire was. Like, Secret Empire was, like, towards the top of the charts a lot of the time on um, on sales, but at the same time, you go to comic shop and you see fat stacks of, of uh, Secret Empire because it was just so many that they were shipping out, and so that's why I think it's going to be with Legacy. Same deal, but yeah, not worth the six dollars. Don't buy this book. I highly recommend you not buy this book. Just don't do it. It is not worth your money. Just wait. There's no point. It's just, just please don't waste your money on it. But if you did already waste your money on it, please let me know in the comments below. What did you think of this book? What are your opinions on it? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to see more, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Yeah, I grew up with the prenup. Mama said keep my C up. Now noticing I'm getting caught cracker and getting beat up. But I stayed up long nights, working hard on my craft. Gave a fuck about the bullies or anyone in my past.